Good morning and welcome to Vermont House Judiciary Committee. It is Thursday, uh, March 26th. Yep. Um, and uh, we are hearing from Representative Lucy Rogers on a proposed amendment to H183. So welcome. Uh, thank you, Chair Grad. Um, my amendment changes an or to an and in the definition of sexual consent. So as the bill currently reads, it says consent means words or actions by a person indicating a knowing or voluntary agreement to engage in a sexual act and changing it to the and will require that um, in order for the definition of consent to have been reached, the act must have been both knowing and voluntary instead of one or the other. Um, so I think the confusion here arose because when a prosecutor is prosecuting um, cases of sexual consent, they're prosecuting to show that there was a lack of consent. And this is, so they're prosecuting a lack of consent, but we're defining consent. So in defining consent, it needs to be both knowing and voluntary in order for a lack of consent to occur if it's either not knowing or not voluntary either one of those will then allow it to not have met the definition of content, consent, which is both knowing and voluntary. So that is my amendment. Thank you. Um, committee members, any, any questions? Yep. Okay, well, we do have- I some assume what we're gonna be hearing from some other witnesses. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to turn now to um, to the Attorney General's office. I don't know if the state's attorneys are available or not, but I believe they have been um, invited. And then uh, and then we will hear from um, from uh, victims advocates. David, welcome. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Committee. David Chair for the Attorney General's office. The Attorney General's office supports this amendment. Uh, the committee will recall a memo that uh, we submitted along with State's Attorney Rory Tebow, in which we did, in fact, uh, recommend the or, and I'll quote the last line of that recommendation. The state should have the ability to elect between a sexual assault being committed by either a lack of a knowing agreement or a voluntary agreement, but requiring both could raise the current burden. We still believe that that is very important, that uh, we should, that uh, it would raise the burden if we were required to prove both. We agree with Representative Rogers that upon further reflection, thinking about how this is going to play out, thinking about the logical implications of this, it is actually the and that will prevent the raising of the burden. And um, for that reason, we support the amendment. We think that that enacts our intention correctly. Uh, and frankly, we apologize to the committee for uh, not catching that earlier and uh, wanna give appreciation to Representative Rogers for catching that now. Uh, so for those reasons, we support the amendment. I also just got off the phone with State's Attorney Tebow who gave me permission to represent to this committee that he agrees with this amendment also. Uh, and he agrees with the way I just characterized uh, the recommendation memo and the way in which it will be more properly uh, enacted, uh, its intention will be more properly enacted by this amendment. Thank you. Uh, any questions for David? Okay. Uh, Sarah Robinson, Network. Good morning. Thank you for having me, uh, Sarah Robinson, Deputy Director at the Vermont Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. Um, our position is that we, we support the amendment uh, in front of you this morning. And similar to the Attorney General, we want to ensure that the language of the bill doesn't unintentionally uh, create any additional burdens on survivors or on prosecutors seeking to um, bring sexual assault cases uh, in Vermont. And given what we have heard from the Attorney General's office and uh, the State's Attorney's office, uh, we believe that this change will accomplish this goal and um, in fact be helpful to prosecutors um, and ensure that survivors do not have an additional, additional burden. Um, and I, I do just wanna say that uh, since this uh, change has kind of arisen um, near the end of the process, we're again, very grateful for 
um, to Representative Rogers for highlighting it and um, to the Attorney General's office and others for considering the impact in, in the courtrooms um, as these cases are being litigated. Um, but we're also taking kind of the broader view and just look forward to continuing to monitor how all the pieces of language in this bill work together in concert um, as the bill continues to move forward and through the legislative process. Um, so again, we support the amendment in front of you today um, and look forward to continuing to work on this bill um, through the legislative process. Great. Thank you. Any questions for Sarah? Yep. Okay, so we do need to vote on this uh, amendment, uh, Selena, and then Tom. I would just add, I was uh, in discussion with Representative Rogers and uh, Attorney Scher and also spoke with um, State's Attorney Tebow last night and, and Legislative Council this morning. And um, I think just one thing I would add is that um, as State's Attorney Tebow pointed out, in most jurisdictions that have adopted these standards, the language is um, knowing and voluntary. And in fact, that's that's why Michelle originally drafted things this way. And um, I think that's helpful in that, um, you know, this is some of this is new, new languages for us in Vermont, and that makes it crystal clear that we can look at um, case law, federal case law and case law and other jurisdictions that have adopted the same legislation and, and hopefully, you know, gives us, gives us a clear path as we interpret it here in Vermont. So I felt like that, that was, that, that, res that, that definitely resonated with me as a um, note in favor of the amendment. Tom. Thank you. David, um... I wonder if you could just give a, uh, I, I need another explanation just to, to get a little better understanding of the difference between the or and the and, I guess. Um, I don't, uh, I, maybe a hypothetical on, you know, if, if or was the language and how it would be different maybe with the and in there, something like that. Sure, Representative, let me, let me try to do that. And I'm, having trouble finding the bill on my too many windows open here, but I think I can just say it here. Um, so let's imagine that a, uh, so right now, the, the, as, it, as it is right now before this amendment, um, the, the meaning of consent, which is defined in a positive manner, consent means uh, that there is either, and I'm adding some words, but I think these words are not changing the meaning, merely clarifying what this says. Consent means either knowing or uh, voluntary agreement. A prosecutor is going to charge a case under A1 of 3252, which is the basic uh, sex without consent version, the sort of most basic version of a sexual assault charge, which is also, I, I believe, the most standard version. So we want to be careful not to raise the burden on that. Um, they're going to charge that. They're going to have to say that there was an absence of consent in order to prove the charge. So let's say that the prosecutor says, well, uh, I can show that there was no knowing agreement. The defense attorney is going to say, going to come back or could come back and say, okay, fine. There was no knowing agreement. Not even going to bother arguing that but I can show that there was voluntary agreement uh, because consent means, and that's important because consent means either knowing or voluntary. All I have to do as a defense attorney is show one or the other um, because of the way consent is currently defined. So then the defense attorney comes back and shows, look, I can show voluntariness, charge is done. I've, de I've defeated the charge. Um, so what you've effectively done in order to prevent that from happening under the current language uh, is that you have required that prosecutors in every case will have to plead and prove both knowing and voluntary in order to prevent a defense attorney from making that argument successfully. If you change it to an and, 
a defense attorney only has to show one or the other because now they're going to say absence of consent. I can show that this person um, had no knowing agreement. There was no knowing agreement here. Uh, well, then a defense attorney can't raise that argument because consent means both knowing and voluntary. So if a prosecutor can show that there is an absence of one of those two, now there's no consent because consent means both of them. Can you, can you say that again? <laughs> Just let me try. Let me try to say that again. So um, under the proposal going forward, um, it's going to consent will mean that there has to be both knowingness and voluntariness in order for there to be an agreement that uh, constitutes consent. A prosecutor then has to show an absence of consent in order to successfully prosecute the charge. And they will, under the proposal, they will only need to show one or the other of those two ways in which agreement may, you know, agreement may happen, like either knowingness or voluntariness. So let's say they pick no, I'm not saying pick. I'm saying, let's say the evidence shows the absence of knowingness. Um, a defense attorney can, cannot now come and say, well, you may show an absence of knowingness, but I can come back and show an absence of voluntariness. Or, you know, defense attorney doesn't even have to show that. They just, they can basically just argue on a motion to dismiss that the case hasn't been, been pled properly. Um, because now with the and, uh, it means that in order for consent to exist, both things have to be present. And if only one of those two is not present, now you've properly pled the case and all you have to do is prove it. So the complexity here is that we define consent in a positive way, saying consent <laughs> means this. And then the crime is defined in a negative way. The crime means the absence of consent. So that's where this becomes conceptually really difficult uh, to sort of wrap your head around. It took me a few minutes to sort of fully assimilate what, what the implications of this are. But basically the and means that both have to be present for there to be consent, which means that a defense, and the consequence of that is that it, a prosecutor only has to plead and prove the absence of one of them. Because if one of them isn't there, then consent isn't there. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, David, is this positive and, and negative dynamic that, that you're referring to? Um, is that how other states' um, statutes are, are um, drafted as well? I did discuss this with Rory and Michelle briefly. And yes, my understanding is the short answer is yes. This is the typical way to draft statutes like this. Any other questions? Okay. I guess well, I don't really have a question, just a quick statement that, yeah. I mean, the, the key to me is that for there to actually really be consent, it has to be voluntary and it has to be knowing. And, and that is the bottom line. I mean, I think that that, and if you're missing one, then, then it wasn't consent. I think it kind of breaks down to that, that, that simple. Thanks. Selena. And not to complicate things further, but I think in the in the examples that David was using, I mean, it, it's a little tricky because I think knowing is, um, especially in all of the other work we've done in these sections, is now kind of intrinsically tied to voluntary. Um, but you could have someone but by the same token, so the uh, David used the example of, um, you know, where you could prove that it was voluntary, but not knowing. But I think the more likely scenario might be that you could be like, well, the person knew <laughs> what was happening. You know what I mean? Even though it wasn't volunt, it wasn't, it was arguably not voluntary under other aspects of the statute. And that I think is what we're trying to, I don't want to put words in representative Rogers mouth but I think that that's the more likely scenario that we would be trying to avoid here right. 
Okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion. Uh, I would move to find the motion favorable. I'll second. Just any more discussion? Okay, so why don't we do this by a show of hands. Um, all those um, who find the motion favorable, show of hands. Okay, and lower your hands. All those. Oops. Okay. Okay, great. Um, all those opposed? No. Okay, great. Thank you. So Selena, you will uh, report the vote for the committee. Yes, and I counted 803. Does that sound right? Yes, yeah. Barbara. Barbara. Coach. Coach and vote Bob. Right. Okay. Okay, great. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks everybody for coming back and thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Yeah, yeah thank, thanks to the committee for your time this morning as well. Yeah.